knew I was capable, number one. I think there's a lot of mindset work that goes in and being a top sales producer. And I knew that I could get the job done. And I knew that it would happen in the right time. Welcome to Sales Pipe Pros Podcast. Here's your host, Mike Petrosian. All right, everyone. Welcome to Sales Pipe Pros. Today, I have a very special guest. I am super excited to have her. We worked together on a team before. She has went from sales to turn to entrepreneurship. Now I'm super excited for her. I can't wait to talk about it. Liz Carroll, welcome. Thank you, Mike. So happy to see you again. I know. It's been Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Happy to have you. So let's kick it out, Liz. I know your background, but let's tell the viewers, how'd you get started in sales? Where did it all start for Liz Carroll? Well, I think it started when I was seven years old and started pulling <laughs> that wagon around the neighborhood, selling produce right at the dinner hour. So um, my father was a farmer and we had a big garden. And so he would bring in produce from the farm. We lived in town. And then I would, my sister and I would take it around the neighborhood right at the dinner hour for the ladies uh, making dinner. And they were so happy to have fresh produce available. And so that's when it started. But I, when I graduated college, I didn't want to go into sales. I went into marketing instead and um, worked for a wholesale lumber company and did all their marketing. And then I had a friend that said, I really think you'd do well over at the, you know, uh, why don't you come work with me? So I did. And that was great because it gave me confidence in sales. And then I had another friend say, I think you could level up and come, why don't you come to IT? And that's when I went to IT in 94. So, oh. yeah. And you've been in IT for quite some time up until? October. I retired in October. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. It doesn't seem like you're retired though, because I see no. you working all the time on LinkedIn and we'll get to that in a second. But let's talk a little bit about your sales skills, because I was truly okay. impressed. I learned a lot from you when we worked together. Full transparency, Liz and I worked together for a SaaS company uh, that streamlined telecom expense management. Mm -hmm. And what I, Liz was our new client hunter. So she was the one bringing in all the logos with barely any marketing, anything. And you did fantastic. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about how you did your prospecting. Let's start with that. I was... Uh, I had to do a lot of networking and I took that on as opportunity. And I also knew that the shotgun approach was not going to work for me to be able to bring in enough business for, um, it was just, it would be too, too scattered. And right. so I became very, uh, focused in verticals. And so those are the, I worked the legal vertical and the banking vertical and then, of course, we had um, network referrals. So did a lot of networking through IT um, groups as well. And then that's, so that's how I filled the pipeline is I became really focused and I got to know those industries very well. And I got to know their pain points. And then I was able to speak their language, which made a big difference when you're talking to a bank CIO because their needs are different than a law firm CIO. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things I was most impressed with was the length of these sales cycles and how patient you were during these processes. I remember talking to a few CIOs. Yeah, Liz was calling for me for like two years, three years sometimes. What yes. inspires you to continue moving forward, even though these guys or gals are not picking up your phone calls? Well, you know, I just knew I was capable, number one. I think there's a lot of mindset work that goes in and being a top sales producer. And I knew that I could get the job done. And I knew that it would happen in the right time. So the other part is I never came across those clients as desperate. And I think that's what catapulted me into my next entrepreneurial thing, which we can talk about later, but I was not desperate when I was looking to make a sale. And I just nurtured those relationships and those relationships have paid off in tenfold. Like many of the clients that um, I've worked with over the years, I haven't worked at many companies. I've worked, um, and I'm still speaking like I am um, in sales, but I'm in a different kind of environment now. But 
when I worked with, in the 26 years, I had several clients that worked with me at the three different companies I worked with in those 26 years. And right. it's because you build those relationships and they knew I would deliver and they knew that I wasn't desperate. Does that, I wanted, I was truthful to them. No, absolutely. And how did you deal with the unresponsive prospects? Was it a specific limit of like eight touches and I'm done? Or was it just, I'm going to con continue going for this until you get back to me? Well, you know, I was not an eight touch and done at, by any means. I didn't, there were very few people that I removed from my prospecting list, but they might not get as frequent of a turn. Um, but I was always, and when I would see them at a networking event, I, I had one one CIO when I walked up and said, hi, I'm Liz Carroll. And he looked at me and he goes, I am so embarrassed right now. <laughs> he had not returned any of my calls. And then he became one of my best clients ever. And I think the other part about that, Mike, is, and you know that I'm kind of old school on how I got a lot of business. Um, I really believed in personal touch and that extra, that extra little effort and through handwritten note cards. I knew you were going to say that. that. I remember yeah, that. I know. <laughs> that particular CIO knew, remembered my name through the handwritten note cards that I had sent him. Wow. What yeah. is that? Let's just be honest. What is the longest sales cycle you've ever worked to a point where you were like, I'm done with this or they finally closed? Five years. Wow. Kudos yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah. It was a nice payout. It was worth it. Always is. Right? I would have hoped for a half a decade yeah. of investment. <laughs> it was a great payout. Yeah, but it's not like I spent my entire time uh, every week moving that forward. It was right. just like, all right, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep working it. Keep sending him things over and over, over the years. When I see him, I'll make sure I introduce myself. That is amazing. Yeah. So now you have gone from a sales rock star to an entrepreneur. You and your husband started a business. Let's hear about it. We did. Well, you know, we've always, my husband and I have always had in our sales career, we've always had a real estate side hustle. So that, that's one. We've already been, we've already worked well together. But one of the things that um, came out of this is we were starting to notice, and I mentioned earlier about not being desperate. And so my husband and I intentionally chose to live between, below our means and with both of us being in sales roles. And I have to say the sales role has been amazing for me as a mother. And coincidentally, very funny that both of my adult children are in sales now. Um, <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> but yeah, I know. <laughs> so um, Dan and I were very, my husband and I were very intentional about um, our finances and so we lived below our means. Basically, we lived on one income and invested the other in our real estate side hustle. But one of the things that that allowed me to do is, one, we had a great lifestyle and everything was great, but it allowed me to not be so, I've got to get this sale. I've got to get this sale. I was able to always, I had one year, full transparency, I had one year that I didn't make President's Club in all my years of sales. Um, but I had a really fun year that year. So it was my own fault. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I always I knew, I always knew I was capable, you know, that's the thing. And so being able to stay focused on what our goals, my, my husband and I are, our financial goals. And then it allowed me to show up really comfortable in front of the client. Absolutely. And you just said that you're retired, but you started a business. Was this part of the retirement plan or were you just so bored with the retirement lifestyle that you needed to start a business to keep yourself busy? Well, I retired from corporate. So that's how okay. I say it now is I retired from corporate and it was all very intentional that uh, Dan and I had decided to start um, a financial coaching business. So we coach high income earners on how to live below their means and intentionally with their money. So. Got it. And yeah. you mentioned, I think earlier on that there was some sort of training program for this. Tell us a little bit about how that process goes. Well, we, um, Dan and I both became um, certified financial coaches and then I've, I'm doing the extra, the extra in getting a life coach certification as well. That's so. amazing. 
but it really comes down to just uh, being intentional and defining your dream of what your dream is. And that's why I love sales so much because the sky's the limit. I mean, there's, if you're working for a company that's got a capped comp plan, that's when I would probably reevaluate. <laughs> But, um, you know, the sky is the limit. And if you have a dream and a goal, sales is an awesome vehicle to get you Absolutely. there. I totally yeah. hear that. I mean, I've been in sales for 15 years now. I don't see myself doing anything else. Well, maybe some podcasting on the side, but yeah. <laughs> that's basically it. So with mindfulmoneycoaches.com, that's the, that's the, yeah. who is your target? It sounds like couples that are currently uh, meeting a, making a specific amount per year. And what would drive them to you? Are they just spending too much? Are they not saving enough? Do they not have a property? Like what would say, hey, Liz, hey, Dan, please help me. You know, a lot of the couples that we work with are high income earners and they're making 350, um, but they're spending 375, 400 and they're just digging a hole. And so that's where we help them with their spending. And then also becoming focused on identifying the dream What's their dream? I mean, do they want to, you know, Dan and I live on the Oregon coast in this beautiful log home, but um, that was our dream, right? Maybe their dream is they want to have a goat farm in West Virginia or a sailboat and sail the, the, you know, around the world. It doesn't matter whatever their dream is, but then we help them figure out the math behind it and then coach them and their accountability partner to realize their dreams. Got it. And is there some sort of like check-in process quarterly, annually to say, are you guys on track or are you you on track? How you doing? (laughs) And then how do you find alignment? Because not uh, often there's not alignment on the dream. So we, particularly since we've been a married couple for 30 some years, we're able to help navigate that for young couples or other couples out there. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, we've done the processes. We've college educated both of our children. We've done things ahead of people that then we can guide them through that process after we've been through it. I have an important question for you, Liz. Um, There's a lot of uh, CEOs popping up in households and I'm not talking about the income providers. I'm talking about their millennial kids starting YouTube channels, becoming Amazon drop shippers, whatnot. What advice would you give to a couple that currently has a CEO living at home, but is not contributing to the bills, but at the same time has this ambition, like they're going to make it? What advice would you give to the couple that's housing that millennial? Well, one, um, I would, I would, (laughs) this is funny because I have a niche in my coaching business, right? Uh, Also of um, cutting the financial umbilical cord of adult children. (laughs) So it depends on when you, what age that CEO is, because I do have a former coworker that I worked with back in um, the nineties. Her 17 year old son is out earning the entire family right now with his YouTube channel. So they have taken steps to make sure he has his financial plan and goals put together and preserving as much of that income that he's making right now for his future, future life. Um, And that he can help some with the family also. So got it. My advice would be, there is lack of success, just the ambition and the goal, but I'm seeing a lot, you know, obviously there's going to be one-offs when these 17 year old, 18 year olds are killing it, making, big dollars with the ads and whatnot, but there is a lot of them like, yeah, mom, I'm going to start a podcast website, et cetera, but they're just not doing anything, not making money. What would you say to that couple? Sounds like what your example, it sounds like they're financially funding that, right? Because right. if they are, then I would say there's a, there's a specific amount that it's mutually agreed upon that it can be invested in that dream. Um, or I would say, go earn the money. <laughs> and then do it get a side job right and then as you know as you know how yeah my kids would have been like i'm not paying for that go i will you are totally capable you can do whatever (laughs) you want (laughs) so last question liz uh going from sales to entrepreneurship now what advice would you give to someone that wants to start that journey themselves i would just get organized I cannot tell you. There's a lot. And to get your thoughts together, though, you know, that's really important. Like, own it. You know, there's no one else that's responsible but you. You are the one that is responsible for 
your thoughts, feelings, actions, results, all the outcome that you want to have. Um, it's all up to you. And so that's great news because you're not relying on someone else, but it's also um, important to get your mind right, your thoughts correct going into that. Get organized and get your mind right. Love it. Yes, absolutely. Organized and mind right. Um, I did have a few tips for someone going into sales if they were just starting right now. Please. So if that's okay that I could share Absolutely, those. go for it. So one of the things that I notice with um, younger salespeople today is um, they could use the help in being clear and concise in their communication and make it easy. Make responding from the client's perspective as easy as possible. So that means very, being very specific on what the outcome is of you want of that communication. Whether if it's an email to set up a lunch appointment, it's which time would you like, what A or B, you know, making it as easy so that the client can respond, A is perfect for me, or really being intentional with how you show up and your timing, um, your being prepared so often, not over caffeinated. That's another thing that I've <laughs> seen. <laughs> So true. <laughs> Chugging I that know. cup of coffee before you walk into that building and like jittering, can't stop your words. <laughs> exactly. And then being really interested and listening to the clients. So those are some basics that I think would be so helpful if someone was just starting their sales career. Yeah, absolutely. Would you uh, say that part of that too is also believing in what they're actually selling? Well, that has been very helpful to me in my career is I've sold some amazing products, um, services. So I think that's important. But I also think that you can gain skills wherever you're working. So I think that's something that there's always something to learn. Right. And there's always a way to believe in something. So if you're not believing it, then you just need to modify your thoughts as to how you would believe it in it or don't sell that product. Like for example, I would never sell vape pens or I, or, or is that what they're called? Right. Or, you know, like, okay, no, I wouldn't, it. yeah, that's something I would never sell in my life. Um, I, I wouldn't sell payday loans. That's not something I would ever <laughs> sell. So I do think you need to, for, to believe in it for a certain, um, a certain amount, but then I also know that there's ways that you can think about it to make yourself believe into it. Absolutely. And last question again, but do you feel like you could ever unplug from the business world in general, or is this your retirement plan? This is you're living the dream right now. This is what you wanted to do. I have manifested exactly what I want to do and what I plan on doing the rest of my life. I just, Amazing. I'm so grateful for my sales career and, and being able Here's the other thing that was so great about sales is that there was a seven year period that I stepped back and was able to work part time while the kids were really active in um, elementary school and middle school. So that I just worked before and after, or I uh, worked during school hours. And then, then I even dropped it down even more and only worked Monday, Wednesday, Friday during school hours for a few years. And that was so great that sales allowed me to do that so that I could be available to my children and be flexible. So and it sounds like you planned that out as well really nicely and it all worked out. Yeah, I, I'm a planner. Love you it. know that. <laughs> well, Liz, really appreciate your time. You're an inspiration to mothers, entrepreneurs, sales executives all around. Thank you so much for being an inspiration to me, of course. And please stay in touch. I can't wait to see what else you have in store. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Good to see you again, too. I always, always loved to working you. with you. So. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Talk to you soon, Liz. Have a Bye. good one. Thanks. Thanks for joining. For more episodes, visit salespipepros.com.